Kilgore College Rangerettes. Missile celebration opens with a dazzling production number. 70,000 fans applauding as the Rangerettes on the other side of the field. A fitting climax. could see what all it did for them. Their poise and their projection and their pride. And, and they could send me letters all the time about what it means to them to have been a Rangerette and the influence that I've had on their life. People come to watch the Rangerettes perform. They don't necessarily come to watch them in their everyday lives. It's our job to make sure there's a transformation from the time you become a Rangerette to the time that you leave. It's the part that the girls don't really know they're showing up for. They think they're coming to just dance and they want to dance with those girls and they leave with so much more. They're more than an institution. They are, they're really uh, the original group. They are a part of American culture and it started right here. Without the oil, there probably would have been no Rangerettes. Within 24 to 48 hours, the little town of Kilroy that had maybe 500 people, there were 15,000 people within a mile and a half of the uh, depot. The population here here is so fast that actual cow and wagon trails became roads. That's why if you look at a map of Kilgore, it looks like a drunk laid it out because nothing's parallel. Roads wind and go east and west and south and, and change. The college was founded in 35. Started football the very first year. Had great football teams at Kilgore College. Clyde Lee in the 1935 was the first football coach. Of course, anytime you have that kind of prosperity, you attract the ne'er-do-wells also. So we had lots of crime. They turned one of the churches into a jail and handcuffed people to a logging chain. They used to come under the stadium and they'd pull a half pint out of their back pocket and drink. Dr. B. Master started the Ranger Rets. was trying to figure out a way to keep the spectators in the football game in their seats at halftime. They'd all go out and get drunk. Fortunately, he had the vision to be able to say, Miss Davis, I need you to come and create a phenomenon at halftime that would keep the people in their seats. She was a legend. Nobody else had ever started a drill team. She started it. Girls have been left out of everything all their lives. They've had to fight for everything that they have. Football team boys, band had the boys, basketball had the boys, baseball had the boys. What did the girls have? They didn't have anything. So they got to belong to something. Till that time at halftime at the football games, the band might play, uh, they might march, but there were no dancing girls. I'm a Ronnie Spradlin from Kilgore, Texas. This is a picture of Gus Neal Davis and me at her 80th birthday party. They were uh, unique here, and of course, like anything successful, they were copied over and over and over everywhere in the world now. I guess every high school in the nation, every college in the nation has a halftime show with dancing girls. When you look across the landscape of uh, professional sports, collegiate sports, high school, middle school, you see dance teams, precision dance teams. And it all began at Kilgore College back in 1940 with Bessie Nell Davis. Rangerettes were either going to take off or we were never going to hear about them again. My name is Shelley Wayne and I am the assistant director and choreographer of the Kilgore College Rangerettes. And I was a Rangerette from 1985 to 1987. I don't think there was any middle ground when she put those young women out on that field in 1940. I'm Dana Blair, and I'm the director of the Kilgore College Rangerettes, and I was a Rangerette from 1981 to 1983. What I just can't imagine is having been on the first line, and it's still going on, and it's 75 years later or 74 years. That, I can't imagine what those ladies are thinking. How many years has it been that we can get together like this? We're not as pretty and smart as we were, but we're still here. You're taught speaking for yourself, lady. Well, I'm <laughs> judging you. I love you, you know it, don't you? Yes. 
My name is Doris Mercer Nival Snow. <laughs> Virginia Gray Law Cole. I'm Eleanor Kirksey Anderson and a member of the First Line of Rangerettes. I was a member of the First Line of Rangerettes. I was a Rangerette from 1940-1942. First Line Rangerette. Three of us were walking down the sidewalk and a girl came running out of the gym and said, Miss Davis wants three of you to come in and try out for Rangerettes. Well, I didn't know what Rangerettes was. It just sounded like fun time to, you know, to do. I had never done a dance step in my life. My father was a Baptist deacon and I had to go home and get permission to be in the Rangerettes because of that. And he says, as long as you don't have to dance with a boy, that's okay. I just remember there we was a had line uh, the 50 or 60 when we had the line. No, 48 maybe. Well, that's only two from 50. Well, okay. I can't remember, it's been so long, but it seems that everybody who went to try out became a part of that first line. We were the first ever. And when we were there, we were the best ever. That's right. <laughs> oh, right. That is right. <laughs> They've come a long way from those first days. this for such a long time and the fact that it's already here makes me excited and nervous. The months have been going by so fast and it's like here, I can't believe that it's finally here. Thompson. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm trying out to be a Kilgore College Rangerette. I go to the Salt Lake School for the Performing Arts. I was on the Dance Conservatory there for two years, 2011 through 2013. One of my friend's moms was from Marshall, Texas, and one night I was over at their house and they were talking about the Rangerettes, and I was like, excuse me, what's a Rangerette? The first time I saw him, it just felt right. When you are somewhere or when you're seeing something happen, you'll know it's right and you'll know that's where you need to be. And I was like, okay, well maybe I'll just try it out. And then I came to mini camp last year and then I was like, okay, this is where I need to be and I need to do whatever I can do to get here. It humbles us to see so many of you um, here today that wants to be a part of this organization. Hi, my name is Kevlin Jones from Longview, Texas and I'm a second time Ranger at Hopeful. When I was trying out last year. It was sometimes I was like, okay, I'll do that tomorrow. But this year I've really been working hard and I've learned from my dance teachers that with confidence, you, it'll get you far. And if you just work really hard and stay dedicated, you'll have better results. I've been working so hard and I hope this is going to get me on this team. <laughs> the reason why I want to try out for Rangerettes is when I first saw them perform, I considered trying out. 
but then I started to hear about their tradition and how they're famous and they're really a hardworking group of girls. The Rangerettes are probably the world's most famous precision drill team. They kick more even than our cheerleaders and they do it quite well. I have the utmost respect for the Rangerettes performance standards and their training. The Rangerettes travel across the country, even to foreign nations, uh, to show what halftime show is all about, to show what hard work and teamwork are all about. When we took the team to Singapore in 1997, nobody else high kicked. No matter how many different props they had, not one single group hooked up and high kicked and jump splitted. They just went crazy. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, how could I have ever doubted that what we had to offer wasn't spectacular. I'll be just praying and waiting and calling her every night and bugging her and hoping that she answers the phone because when she's in her zone, I never know if I'm gonna get her. <laughs> if I was to make it, I would just say like, hey, the hard work doesn't end here. I will keep striving. I would say the hard work starts now. I would not quit. I would be so grateful. Ugh, I just, it would be so good. <laughs> I admire you for your courage, your commitment, and uh, being willing to try out. My name is Caroline Bentley, and I will be trying out for the Kilgore College Rangerettes this upcoming summer as a 74th line hopeful. I've moved around all over Texas because my dad's in the Army. I didn't like being an Army brat, and I didn't like having a dad in the Army because he was gone. We moved to Austin seven years ago and had the blessing of being on Legacies with Miss Lyons for four years. The Rangerettes are built on discipline and respect, and I know that's something that I want to have in college and I want to have for the rest of my life, and Rangerettes will not only help continue that pathway, but help me live it through and enjoy it. To have people come forward and identify that they're going to Kilgore Junior College shows me that we're in a whole different world. I think there's a lot of people that believe that junior colleges have seen their time. I am not a believer of that philosophy. I think that junior colleges and community, co and community colleges absolutely serve a very vital purpose. I made the decision because not only was it a once in a lifetime opportunity, but that I could um, transfer into the school that I wanted to. I would have the opportunities that I wouldn't have at a regular school with the girls and the discipline and the type of the organization. I wish you good luck this week. Uh, don't get discouraged, keep your head up, and it'll be a good week. So blessings on you and have a great one, thanks. I am Sierra Nelms and I am a senior at Marcus High School and I am trying out for Rangerettes. My mom and dad are so excited because they love the whole Rangerette organization and they would love that both of their daughters got to live as being a Rangerette because they saw how much Sydney enjoyed it and they would love for me to have that same wonderful experience. I've been working hard on my dancing, my kicking, and making sure I have everything for pre-training, but I don't think I'm ready for the emotional, the only word I can think of to go with this, which is awful, is emotional massacre. <laughs> Our tryout is such a sacrifice for so many girls. I mean, they have to come up here for a solid week. They have to wait till almost the very end of the summer to find out if they're going to get to be a part of this. And most of these girls have probably not ever not made something. We currently have 107 applications. In the grand scheme of things, to some people that may not seem like a lot, but you basically have to understand that the type of girl that tries out for Rangerettes is someone who really wants to be here, someone who is aware of our expectations and our rules, 100% on board with our work ethic and how we strive for perfection in everything that we do. Not knowing if I'm gonna be on that sign or if I'm not gonna be on that sign. Like, it's just really emotional because everyone there is wanting the same thing, but not everyone can have that same thing. We are a part of their lives at such a unique time whenever they are evolving into the young adult that they're gonna be for the rest of their life. I think more than anything else, it gives you self-confidence that you can do anything you want to do if you work hard enough for it. Nothing comes easy and nothing comes without hard work and sweat and effort. But if you're willing to put forth the effort and make sacrifices, you know, beauty knows no pain. 
if you want to get there, you have to work hard for it. You have to try out for the line. You have to try out to perform. Uh, everything in life is tryouts. Everything is competition. And it teaches these ladies that at an early age that they have to work for what they want. I got number 69, and the second I got it, I kind of looked at it, and I looked at it again, and I realized that that's the number I'm going to be looking for on Friday. <laughs> I got my number, 37. Number 84. I'm excited. I'm definitely most excited about finally knowing um, what I've been working so hard towards. I'm most excited about Thursday, just being done and just waiting for the results. I just want to know. I'm most excited about everything. I could be standing next to some of the girls that I may be on a team with or I look up to. for me if I make rangerettes or if I don't. I think of them like, God, like, I don't know how to describe it, but they're just, I don't know, they're amazing. And I mean, they're a little bit intimidating. Very intimidating. Very intimidating. <laughs> Girls do not want a Mamby Pamby director. Okay. Do not do this. Jumping up, jumping up. I should not see your head. Get it out, get it out. Where are you going? You gonna take off flight? I think Shelly and I have a legacy together. I don't for one second think that I have a legacy by myself. We are close in age. I mean, we're five years apart. Four and a half years, not five. I, I think we're just like a duo. <laughs> we're Blair and Wayne. Shelly and I are not overly motherly or nurturing to the girls. If I'm all lovey-dovey and friends with my girls, I'm not gonna have the same ability to direct them. Sometimes they think that we don't ever think about the corrections we make. And, you know, most time we give them and we don't think about them. But sometimes you wonder if it ever had a negative effect or if they carried it around. I can remember mentors of mine in Superstar Drill Team saying, those girls will love you when they have a blue ribbon. When you've taught them well enough and they get a blue ribbon, they're going to love you as a teacher. There's just, that's what they want and need from you in, in that position. The hopefuls are required to wear a pin sign and practice with their name on it. This is my pin sign. I got three. So one to wear during the week, one for sign drop, and then one just in case. The sophomore rangerettes are actually going to start tomorrow morning going by their last names. Hopefuls are expected to know all the sophomore names by the Friday of pre-training. There is a girl, I think her name is Zoe, that made it. And it's like, has the sophomore's pictures on it. But I actually didn't use that to learn their names. My hopeful roommate, Mackenzie, made flashcards uh, with their rangerette picture and then their name on the back. And then we'd like take turns being like, okay, who's this? Hello, I'm Jenna Helduser and I'm from College Station, Texas and I'm a rangerette on the 73rd line. It makes me so proud to see how much we've changed. It's an amazing feeling. Exactly a year ago, we were in the same situation. I'm Robin Richardson from Flower Mound, Texas, and I'm a rangerette on the 73rd line. As a hopeful, it is so overwhelming, but we're just there to kind of guide them through the tryout process, because it's hard. And I think it's one of the things that makes rangerettes so cool and what really connects you to other rangerettes because they all went through the same thing. And I'm excited to have a hand in their week. 
Also during pre-training, the officer candidates kind of get their first opportunity to really step up to the plate and show off their leadership skills. The most important thing that y'all have to start learning to do is to not talk. Um, hopefuls may not talk or ask questions until given permission. They ask questions a lot. When I don't understand things, I'll probably be the hardest to, I'll be like, okay, never mind. Please know that we understand that's a lot to take in at one time and that we know you're not gonna do everything perfectly right off the bat. But we do wanna see that you're making the effort to do that, that you're trying to learn the right right way. I mean, I'm still nervous and I still wanna cry. Hopefully I can just slam my face with my kicks. For tryouts, you'll be learning a fast jazz studio combination, a kick, a field high kick, and a contemporary style combination. When I say we are marking you, what I mean is we are writing notes, we are writing comments, we are writing things to help us remember how you perform that particular thing. I think the most difficult thing for me is going to be turning in my boat on Wednesday night, knowing that my opinion could change the view on a hopeful is really scary and it's a lot of responsibility. The most difficult thing in selecting the 74th line will probably be just selecting girls that have not only like the dance ability that you need to have to be a rangerette, but also having like the drive behind it. That sounds really cheesy, but you have to want to be here because that's the thing that gets you noticed. I just have a sense of peace about everything because I know that whoever sees their number on the sign on Friday is who's supposed to be here. Getting marked was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was gonna be a nervous wreck. But with markings, you get a chance to redeem yourself. So if you mess up, you have the rest of the week and all the other markings to show them and prove to them that you have what it takes. It's kind of nice because that means they're like watching you all week. So it makes the tryout process really fair. It wasn't as bad as I thought. I thought I would get up and freak out and forget it and want to cry, but it wasn't that bad. I'm a slow learner, so everybody's like catching on so fast and I'm getting a little frustrated with myself. It's just when I marked it, I got nervous, and I was just like, I just didn't know it when I did it. Last year, I wasn't really used to this kind of dancing, so I was just like, when I learned, I was like, whoa, what's going on? But this year, I feel more comfortable. It's just learning it and getting it, getting it in my head. I've always had that problem with learning choreography. When I didn't make it, I felt like, oh, man, this, is, this sucks. I gave myself 24 hours. You know, we went to Dallas, and she kind of, you know, cried and but that Monday she was making phone calls, setting up practice, setting up just everything. I was just I was amazed. I was amazed. I take ballet twice a week. Two jazz classes, including Mrs. Swain's jazz class, kicking every day, Tippy Kirby's jazz class, working out doing cardio. Actually I take four jazz classes a week. Financially I was prepared for it. You know, I was prepared to do what I had to do. If I had to pick up an extra shift or, you know, wanted to make sure she was well trained, we took her critique sheet and we took it very seriously. I kept my um my critiques in my car, so every time I go off to dance, I'll just look at them and remind myself of what I need to work on when I go in and keep in mind. So my, I keep them right here on the dashboard. I needed to just get more in, in more advanced dance classes, and I really wasn't doing that last year, so I took that very seriously. That's what basically it said. I don't really remember what I did, but I feel good about it. This was one of the things that I was really stressing out about, um, and so glad that I got an earlier number and an even number, so I got to go today. Physically, I'm not feeling very well. I got sick last night. Like my stomach, it felt like somebody was like stabbing me in the stomach, and I threw up in the bathroom a couple times during rehearsal, and then my uncle lives in Tyler, and he's a doctor, and so he came up and he set up an IV in the middle of the parking lot and gave me some medicine, but I'm still feeling a little cronky today. It's taken every ounce of energy to keep on going. Apparently it's a thing to decorate for pre-training, so my roommate Haley Martin and I we went to Walmart last night and got streamers and dangly stars and flag banners just to brighten up the mood. It took a long time. 
Probably an hour. Get your mind off of this. We share the same passion for dancing and the same passion and the goal and the dream of trying out for Rangerettes. Yeah, excited and nervous. Really nervous, actually. <laughs> I was raised of being like, trying your hardest all the time, no matter what. I've already have my training planned and everything for the whole summer. Miss Lyons, who was a former lieutenant on Rangerettes, is gonna help train every day through kicking and stamina building and dance technique. Also go to both of the Rangerette mini camps. I'm just to the point now where it's all in God's hands and it's meant to be whatever it is. I got to talking to President Mas uh, Dean Masters. I said, um, well, what do you want, a drum and bugle car? And he just laughed and fell back in his chair and he said, over my dead body, I wouldn't have one. And I said, well, what do you want? He said, hmm, that's why I'm gonna hire you. I think Miss Davis was a genius. She was just a forward thinker. She was always, always looking beyond the here and now. Uh, the community held her on a pedestal because she was almost a miracle worker in what she had done, starting the first drill team in the nation and then taking and transforming them into something that was so far and so ahead of what it started. Well, the Rangerettes have done in being the pioneers for our halftime entertainment. Uh, they've created their own art form. Look at the industry that they created and look at the industry that Miss Davis did with this beautiful art form that is truly iconic. It's unfortunate that she didn't live long enough to see the total saturation and perpetuation of drill team as an industry. I'm Howard Vaslovic, Kilgore College photography instructor since 1976. I authored the Kilgore Ranger Red book in 2008. Well, there are all kinds of little subcultures within our environment here, not only in East Texas, but throughout Texas and throughout the United States. And the drill team, they have their own little society. First joining Rangerettes, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Some of the rules of being a Rangerette is that you can't talk to your sophomores. Rangerettes can't walk in grass. Can't go out with wet hair. Rangerettes can't chew gum. You don't want to break a rule. You don't want to be that freshman. And then practices, your hair is slicked back. You're in your leotard and all black and your pin sign. You feel so strange. I'm Dina Bolton Colvin. I was the second director of the Rangerettes. You want a group to look like one instead of 48. You want it to different people. You want them to look like one person up there dancing. I mean, the idea of team first, you second, it's huge. Um, and we are 18, 19 while we're there. And so we don't all completely know who we are yet. You don't do anything by yourself in Rangerettes. You work together to accomplish what's expected. Which is something you just don't get on your own. I mean, going through that range threat process pushes you past a point where you never thought you could pass. When they get out there in front of all those folks and perform and succeed the way they succeed, they realize they can do what perhaps they couldn't do before in such a precise, perfect way. I feel like Texans think of these things, so they think of these things just to kind of, again, like, motivate you, keep you going, and, and kind of get you through um, in, this, in this really nice way. You don't find that very often. You don't find a group of 36 or 70 people living together that share something so special and common and share a bond that's so unique. Once you're a Rangerette, you're always a Rangerette. And I told them that from the first time I ever had the first group. Now you were a rangerette, and you're gonna always be a rangerette, so don't forget it. Anyone who had Miss Davis talks about the lessons that they learned from her. That she molded them. The impact that she had on her girls is very strong. I loved her, she knew I did, and I knew she loved me too. What's not to love about somebody who takes you to the next level that you're capable of going? She expected a lot of you, and uh, that's never a bad thing. They all loved her. 
She was a pretty special person. I liked what she did for me. She made me poised. She made me um, learn to be proud of myself. I don't know if I'd be a mayor today if it hadn't been for being a manager. The things you learn about uh, what makes other people happy is what we learned from Gussie Nell. I tried to give the Ranger Rep something that would last throughout their lifetime. And uh, I told them to always do their best and to do it with a smile. My kicks are okay. I haven't learned proper technique because I haven't had anyone to teach me because in Utah we don't kick. I know they kick to their nose and not their ear. And I know that you have to keep straight leg and pointed toe and not turned out. So it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for me to break some of my habits, but I gotta do it. I just wanna prove to myself that if I work hard enough at it, then I can succeed. I'll just kick until I physically can't kick anymore and then I'll keep kicking. My mom came and helped me unpack and she said, we're in a dorm room listening to country music in Texas in Stark Hall on the Kilgore campus. And I was like, that's a lot to take in. At the Salt Lake School for the Performing Arts, they had a statistic at graduation and they said 100% of kids get scholarships. And everyone is going everywhere at my school. We have people in New York, Pennsylvania, in LA, Seattle, England, Scotland, and it's amazing. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to New York. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna go to a tiny little town in Texas. So I did what I needed to do to introduce her to the Rangerettes. I sent her to the, the summer camp last summer. She didn't know a soul, she came down. She loved it, she's like, mom, this is where I belong. Last night, I talked to a lot of my family and it was really hard because like I haven't seen them in a month. And this week determines the rest of my future. It's huge. If I don't make it, then I, my life will go a completely different route than if I do make it. So it's, it's really overwhelming to kind of like take it all in that it's, it's happening <laughs> right now. Kick is really hard this year. I mean, it's hard every year, but it definitely, there's a lot of like footwork. And... Wanna make sure that you are aiming up as far over into that far corner as you can. Shelly likes to put a lot of ballet into our high kick, so you're, you're gonna struggle if you've never coupéed or degageed. You're gonna definitely struggle a little bit. I'm pretty tired, but not too bad because I don't know why I'm not tired. Um, maybe I'm just saying I'm not tired. <laughs> sister was trying out Kung Fu Panda like was a really big like movie at that time and like it was about like not giving up and determination so all of her decorations in her room were about Kung Fu Panda and I was like in middle school so I was like oh I'm gonna give her this cool blanket and so today she gave it back to me to have for when I'm trying out. When Sydney was a rangerette I just seemed like that little little sister so I'd go stay with her and They'd all treat me like I was like their own little sister. So it was really exciting. And I went to every football game, freshman and sophomore year of the 69th line. I just loved going to watch the Rangerettes. Like it was so fun. And I loved it because I got to miss school on Fridays to come to Kilgore. 
as soon as like Sydney went to Rangerettes, like we started cracking down and taking like a ton of dance classes. It does cost, and it not only money but time. The fundraising that you have to do for, you know, during the. For, oh. I just want to be like you and talk like you. You're so good. I get nervous. I need like a script or something. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like how these people you live with in the dorm and you dance with and you practice with, they become like your second family. And I just think that'd be so cool to gain however many people could hopefully be in my class as my sisters. so much potential and it makes it so hard to choose. I even started tearing up, this is really bad, but I started tearing up watching all of the hopefuls because there's so many good people. There's only like 34 to 38 spots, which isn't a lot for how many, how much like potential and how much drive that's in there. So it's crazy and it's very competitive. It's gonna be a hard decision this year. I just hope that we all could be on the team together so it almost pushes me more to try harder so we can all have that opportunity to possibly be Rangerettes together. Kevlin Jones, she, this is her second year and she's blowing us all out of the water. I could not do this twice. So she pushes me to get through this as strong as I can. I love watching Emily Deal. She's so graceful and she has great techniques. That's one person I watch for motivation before I go. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna try to look like that. <laughs> um, one girl that really stuck out to me, her name's Emily Deal. Emily Deal, I've noticed her since minicamp. I think she's a definite. I try not to watch people because I know my personality and I know if I watch people I'm going to freak myself out. Emily Deal, she uh, was at our first camp, had a very, very impressive uh, solo performance. Uh, I choreographed the solo between mini camp and pre-training, so I had about two weeks. Um, it was pretty challenging, but I love to choreograph. I have a big passion for it and I have a passion for dance as well. I'm Emily Deal. I'm a senior at Allen High School. I'm a co-captain of the Allen Talonettes, and I am trying out for Rangerettes. These up here, they're from drill team competitions. These three are solos, and then one of them's from my duo senior year uh, with my fellow captain. I want to further myself in my training, and I want to better my dancing. I think that Rangerettes would really help me do that. Now with dance being just so available, you know, with So You Think You Can Dance and, you well, know, being taught uh, in America's Got Talent and it's taught as a daily part of, you know, their, their, their high school curriculum. Um, you know, it's just, it's changed, it's changed the structure of drill team itself. And so, you know, we are, we naturally get, in most cases, stronger dancers than we do kickers. And now we find ourselves in a situation of, you know, having to try to marry those two together and get the best Rangerette. Seeing Rebels my senior year is really what decided, or what made my decision to try out. They're all absolutely amazing and blow you away with the skill and their energy. And it was so good, and ever since then, I had, like fell in love with the Rangerettes. And I actually still watch the DVD <laughs> till this day. of the show 
is dancing. Revels is the big Rangerette showcase and it's at the end of the year. Did I see in this dance Revels? I guess I did in high school. I know it started with the stage band, but I just, I know Miss Bolton always said she really changed the structure. I thought I could make them better. I sure did. Because I knew how to polish and perfect. First Revels I came to see was 1975. Vicki Fulgham was captain. And what, did she do the eight count fan kick? Yes, I heard she this. did the slow fan. Yeah. And it, she took complete eight count complete to do I mean, her fan. Or, or maybe, 16. <laughs> maybe 16. Maybe <laughs> It was famous. I mean, I've heard about it. The ability to be a high level dancer and not just a high school drill team student who can eye kick has come more and more and more to the fore. As far as dance ability, as far as Ranger at Rebels, as far as you know what we did on the football field, I hope we always tried to top what we did the year before and it's getting really difficult to continue to do that. I just wanna say that. Nowadays, I think you can't just be that strong dance team girl. You have to have a pretty solid studio dance background as well in order to be competitive and make it in tryouts. Yes. We would have taken a slamming kicker Without a doubt. Oh, we'll teach her to dance. Yeah, we'll teach her to dance. <laughs> really? <laughs> not so much. There are not <laughs> enough hours in the day for me to do that now. <laughs> yeah. And then that one last performance is, is the high kick. When you envision what they encompass, that all-American girl image, I am someone special and unique to a certain organization. You visualize the high kick. I think it has become more dance as the years have gone on and maybe less drill. However, both forms are beautiful and I think when combined, they're original. And that's what was original to the Ranger Ed. <laughs> expecting to mark contemporary till after lunch. I'm actually really happy that we just went ahead and did it. It's not as scary anymore because we have been um, just putting ourselves out there. I know the markings are doing more good for us than harm. I thought I did good. Just a couple memory mistakes. I'll keep working on it and I'll have it better by the next marking. It was a lot to handle. <laughs> we just need the candidates to really 
buckle down and show us what they can do. My stomach still hurts a lot, um, and I got sick again this morning, so kind of ready to have a break. You can tell she's good, but she just hasn't sick? been able to. Yeah, yeah really sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's and it's like she just. Yeah, she was. I mean, she was yeah. pale. Like she yeah. looked. She almost looked ashy. She just posted a picture of her wearing her pin sign, doing the "I love you" sign in her hospital gown. She has been doing everything. Like mm -hmm. she's not sat sat out or sat down. But at least y'all seen her enough to mark her. She's been. I mean, she's been up doing stuff. So that's good. All of the doctors that have come and talked to me. Um, they don't understand how I could have danced with um, an infected appendix and that if I kept dancing, it probably would have ruptured. We're really confused on the process on which to go um, because I've been through four markings. Um, we don't know if I should stay and go to sign drop and just see if I have a snowball chance or um, to just pack up and go home to Austin tomorrow. In preparation for a rangerette, it was already um, definitely testing my faith, just um, making me trust God that like, this was the right decision while all my friends were out on cruises and on vacation. I was in the gym working out or dancing or uh, spending my whole summer at camps. I'm sorry. Um, I'm at a mix of emotions. Um, I'm really proud of myself that I worked um, so hard for something that I've dreamed about for such a long time. My body just couldn't, couldn't take it. I want to go to sign drop because I want to see that maybe there's a chance. Tomorrow will be your last time to really get up in front of the two directors and then these three judges. I want to encourage you to do your very best. I'm more confident now than last year. I just thought that I wouldn't be good enough from the start and I just put that in my head and it kind of just ate at me the whole time I was at tryouts. It'll be just a little thing that might help you get in or score high enough. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to become a rangerette and if I don't make it then I don't make it but that's not what I'm focused on at all. You gotta pour it all in there tomorrow. This is really what I want to do and there's extra pressure because I don't want people to think that I'm exactly like my sister because I am different. The talent pool is very strong. I don't want to be overconfident in anything that I do. You never know what could happen and maybe Ranger Reds isn't God's plan for me. And so, you know, it's just good to wait and see until the sign drops if I make it or if I don't. When I got the news that I needed emergency surgery, it definitely was a faith tester. Whatever the outcome may be on Friday, that is all part of what he has in store for me and for my future. You've got to turn it on tomorrow and give us your very, very best. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask y'all to move up here and have a seat, like on here. Ladies and gentlemen, the world famous college range. I remember exactly this night last year. You hear da 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 da, and your your heart stops, and you're just like, oh my gosh. It's just that one moment the night before tryouts where it's do or die. You're looking at them and you just want it so bad.
know, this is just where I want to be. I want to be here so badly and just getting to watch them in front of us and know that there is a possibility of me being in that uniform next year. That could be me in like 48 hours. It would be amazing and I really, really hope that that is my plan and that I just hope so. Almost at that point, like, you can't work any harder. Like, you can't prepare anymore. There's, like, kind of nothing else that you can do other than kill it at tryouts the next day. The whole tryout process brings um, some nerves, the last, you know, the last performance I get to do before sign drop. I'm feeling good. I'm just trying to stay confident. I'm just ready to perform and not make the mistakes I've made doing markings and just ready to go. She's always been the my support and she's just always encouraged me but she's still been able to do that through texting and you know she's still with us. I feel a lot better I mean for me when I'm just standing there smiling I sit and like talk to myself and I think in my head. There's still like that like panic in the back of my mind that I'm gonna miss a kick. And it just kind of psychs me out because I'll think oh I did that wrong oh I did that wrong. The pressure is like really on because this is our last time to really show the directors and the judges like what we have and what we've how we've improved this week because I think I have a great chance now. Like, I feel like I'm a good contender. I'm done for the day. I mean, there is the chance of callbacks, but for the most part, I think the hardest part is over. I did my best, my very best that I could do and did everything that I should have done to get there that I could not be happy either way. I just completed a Rangerette tryout. So I was just letting my body go and just seeing what would happen. And I did good, I think.
I promise. Keep breathing. I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't lie to you, too. Okay. Keep breathing. It's kind of a heartbreak when I heard my number because you don't know what callbacks entail. You really don't. Everywhere, everywhere there are callbacks, there are different kinds of callbacks. Callbacks to see if they have the right team. Callbacks to see one girl compared to five others. Um, callbacks to see, to make sure that you are not going to be on their team. And I have no idea what these callbacks are. how we feel about the decision that we're gonna make and how it is gonna affect their lives. And we know how drastically it's going to change for the girls that do make it and the girls that don't make it. It's, it's not the same, but it is a change for both parties. Only two years of your life that makes a big impression on you. That experience would follow me for the rest of my life. I think I got this job just because I was a rangerette. I think it's just common knowledge that if you go through the program and you're a freshman and you're a sophomore and you make it through and you know your success, it's just going to be beneficial. My principal, when he hired me, was very specific and said that he prefers to hire rangerettes. They are respectful and responsible. Um, they know what they're doing, uh, I think is what he said. I learned as a rangerette, you, you organize and you plan and you work your plan. This was extremely important to me as a lobbyist. It gave me an opportunity to do what innately was within me and to find what talent I might have had. It teaches you to put the whole above the self, the performance above your feelings, even physical pain. How to be a lady, how to present yourself, how to always be your best, what was expected of you, not on the field, but off the field. I was at my parents and I was leaving to go to the studio and my mom knew that I had major butterflies and was very nervous and I rehearsed and had my talking points but you never really know until you're in a studio with the, um, you know, the producer talking in your ear and the, the, the bright lights and I'm about to leave and my mom, blessing, she said to me, she said, remember, you're a rangerette and um, that, you know, it all came back. It just, I, I got choked up when she said it then too. I know that I can go out in the world and hold my head up high and conduct myself like a young lady and to do my job to the best of my ability and nothing could have prepared me for that except rangerettes. 
I always said that I would never be one of those people that's like, Rangerettes, try out for Rangerettes, do it. Yeah, you should do that. But it, I realize why now people do that. People come and recruit so much all the time because they want, they just want everyone to be as excited and happy about the organization as they are. The Rangerettes made my life. Made my, my college life, my married life, everything was great because the Rangerettes pushed me into that. They didn't push me, they led me into it. I think about it a lot. You can see my shirt. I'll always be a Rangerette, and this means a lot to me to be able to wear it. The entire Rangerette tryout process is emotional. Um, and I find the older I get, <laughs> you would think it would get easier the older you get. Actually, the older I get, and the more I do it, sometimes I think the harder it gets. You can't help but have some sort of remembrance or connection and, you know, to those kids, and you certainly want them to, you know, to achieve the red, white, and blue, which is what they're going for. Um, and, but sometimes that's just not possible, and unfortunately we're the you know, we're the ones that made the decision whether they get to wear it or not. The morning of sign drop was really a much different situation than obviously anybody has had. As we walked from Stark to Dodson, every emotion you could possibly have, you're like, feeling at that moment. People weren't saying much and you could just tell everyone's emotions were running and it was kind of nerve wracking and that made me more nervous, the quiet and the anxiousness than I think knowing that I was about to walk to sign drop. The moment that I had been waiting for but at the same time dreading was coming so close. painted white and um, but in an effort to you know make it look red white and blue it's, we created a grid of blue with blue duct tape you know have the rangerettes and some red glitter and um, some bows that need some fluffing and you know we've got this really amazingly talented sophisticated dance team and we have this um, kind of makeshift homemade little board <laughs> that um, even if we tried to do away with it I think it I think the girls would say no we really want the one that's been coming down for however long they think it's been coming down you know everything in Rangerettes we think has been a tradition since the very beginning which is not true but you know I guess if you you know use something or do something for 20 30 years they want to do that. And they want to. They want to do what everybody else has been doing and use what everybody else has been using. And so and so's number was on that sign. And um, you know, for all I know, this is the same board that my number was on there. Dana's number was on there. It just looks a little bit different. Something, y'all, there's always the risk of not being chosen. 
but be so proud that you tried, that you did not quit, that you came and went for this is something to always be proud of. <laughs> we are very proud of our organization. We have an incredibly long, rich heritage filled with tradition, um, and we think it's very, very special. And so with something that special, selecting the next line that will continue to carry on the legacy of Ranger X is extremely important to us. Those of you that are going to make it today, your life is going to change drastically. But the hard work, you haven't even seen hard work yet. <laughs> and they, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you all very much. And it was my honor to teach you this week and to work with you and to watch you grow into, and grow and develop. And at this time, I think our um, Sergeant Jenna. On behalf of my class, we just wanted to say that we are so, so proud of you guys. And we are so thankful that you chose to come here, even if it was just for a week. We are so, so proud and so thankful and grateful to you guys for coming this week and for getting to learn from us and share in our pre-training as well. So thank you guys for coming here so, so much. So, Just remember this style and talent at once you'll I'm be not inspired. giving myself another option because a bunch of my friends kept saying, well, what if you find something better than Kogor? What if you find something better than the Ranger House? And I'm like, um, I can't. So um, I, I have to be one. I have to do everything I possibly can. In the end, you'll find you made it a Ranger at through and through. <laughs> At football games or at Revels, they're so clean and they're so sharp, but at the same time, they're so poised and graceful. And I think it's just that combination, it just, I'm drawn towards it and I'm drawn towards, you know, they seem like a family. And I guess that's just really what drives me to want to try out and be a part of it, you know, be a part of history. At this time, we're going to say a prayer, so if y'all bow your heads. <laughs> When I see them, I just see how happy the looks on their faces and how happy they are and how hard they work. And I just I just want to be a part of something like that. Just I just want to be a part of a drill team that actually they equally work. They try for perfection and they don't they don't stop until they get there. Help us the, those who make the light and those who don't work. Help us all just really just find comfort in your name. For two days I had sat in my hospital bed, you know, they're not going to take me, I was sick, um, I didn't perform the way I needed to perform, and having my best friend sit next to me, I wanted not only it for me, but I wanted it for both of us, because I know how hard we both worked and how much we both wanted it. Lord, help us all guys be able to be strong and be there for each other. Throughout this time, Lord, I just really would love to be a rangerette, and it's almost myself pushing me, and the fact that I would love to make everyone proud and know that I can do this on my own, and I want to be able to say that I am a world famous Kibblecore College rangerette. <laughs>
I know you're excited. We hope you are. You should be a little nervous, too, about what you just got yourself into. We are going to start from the top, so go ahead and move to your side and get in your lines to get ready to come in for the bottom. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mrs. Lane. in so many situations, but this was just different. It was such a marvelous experience, and it's definitely one that I will remember forever. We are ready to begin the second portion of our show, which is our Rangerette Officer Tryouts. So if you would please welcome our nine Rangerette Officer candidates as they introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Jenna Haldeuser, and I'm Officer Candidate number five. Obviously, I would be more than honored and humbled to be, you know, voted by my class and thought of by you guys as a good option for captain. This is probably the thing that I was most nervous about though, so I'm really glad to have that out of the way. I'm just going to try and focus on having fun tonight and performing with my class at my last show offs and um, just being in such a fun atmosphere. Just the cheering and all of the people in the audience and you see all these forevers, you come to see you. You're like in the experience instead of watching from the outside in. moment probably ranks up in the top two moments of my life somewhere. Now that the freshmen have done their first performance as Rangerettes, it's become real for them. We've done our first performance as sophomore rangerettes and that makes it real for us and now we have officers our team is is a whole now gonna pack up some of these empties here just as soon as we know where they lay on a long hot summer day you know that we are extremely excited to have you as freshman rangerettes you are our future so your role as a freshman is very important but you are going to spend one long year doing the most learning you've ever done in your entire life
would say the first couple weeks of getting ready for that first performance is more like a boot camp because then we aren't messing around. They look like they're in a car commercial, you know, people that jump in a car commercial. And y'all, it's not going to help us. I know you're hot and tired, but it's not going to help us to know if it looks good if we don't do it properly. If I see one more person walk like this, I'm coming down there. And you don't want me down there. Just tell me. You don't want me. It is so hot. I don't think anyone understands how hot the turf is. In the air, it was 105. So on the football field, it was at least 115, if not hotter than that. One day, I just thought I was going to melt and die. On the field at 1 o'clock in the afternoon every single day, in really thin, worn out boots, is one of the most painful experiences ever. And you have to smile, looking like you love life. Our expectation is, is completely elevated, and most people would say our expectation is off the chart and way too high, but we like it there. You are forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and always now until you die a red dress, okay? And you made the choice to do that. It's about getting those freshmen ready to perform in that very first line. Everyone has to look like seasoned performers in 10 days because no one cares that we have new people that just got here. They expect a ranger at performance. And I want that leg back over there. I, I, I want their leg, I, I don't want it vertical. I want it back over the back side of their head. You know, she really wants her leg on the back side of your head. These are not in the kick at all. She's hurt. Um, and yeah, she's already hurt. A lot of people have been getting a lot of injuries. We have tendons torn, like some sprained ankles. I think pre-training seems in retrospect to the freshmen, like a piece of cake. Go, 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 go. She needs to already start. Go, 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 go. They need to strive to the top of the number. Like that. Seems like that. It's a big diagonal. All the freshmen are still kind of getting used to it. Sophomores are getting back in the routine of things. So it's really exciting to have that very first football game to put on the uniform. I think rangerettes are at their best under pressure. I think it's just like the little things, the ins and outs of, you know, getting behind the stands and stuff. That's what makes me nervous. The responsibility for it to go smoothly kind of lays on myself and the officers. So we've never done it before, so we're kind of going into it blind. Have your A game on tonight. Be concentrating. Every little individual move that you make is important to the overall picture. There's there's not one person that at any given time is any less important than the person standing next to you for any reason. It's definitely one of those moments where you're like, all the work that we've been putting in for the past two weeks, like two and a half hour long practices on the field, it's all going to be worth it tomorrow. Tonight is the first game as a ranger. Tonight is the very first game. First time we put on the uniform. I didn't make any of the performances, but I'm not worried about it. I'm wearing the red, white, and blue, and I know that there are at least 60 girls that wish they could be in my spot. I have put the uniform on. I'm nervous and excited at the same time. It's super on edge and super exciting. You know, just to be like standing in tight lines in our uniforms, you know, in its entirety is just, I cannot wait and I'm just really excited, yeah. <laughs> Not only is it our first game, but it's also our biggest rival game. Which is really scary because the Apache Bells are um, our biggest like rival team, I guess. I got a text from my friend and she was like, did Tyler Junior College call you? And I was like, 
you know, what are you talking about? And she said that her director had gotten a call that the Apache Bells were going to hold an audition. I didn't know anything about this team. I didn't know. All I knew is they wore yellow, and my sister said that they wore funny long skirts. Between, like, Bells and Rangerettes, there's not really, like, a huge difference. Like, they're both that dance and drill team, which I really wanted to be a part of. And they both teach you that respect and give you those connections for life and making the sisterhood. And I really am enjoying it, and I'm just really blessed to be able to be a part of an organization like this. It, the difference is that Rangerettes was my dream and Bells was not, which is bad to say, but... I mean, I'm happy I'm here. I couldn't be more blessed to have the opportunity. And I'm glad that I get to be a part of something. But it, it is going to be kind of tough going there and knowing, like, that's what I wanted to do. And I'm not there. I'm not, like, embarrassed because I don't want them to think that the Apache Bells aren't good or, like, they just take all the Rangerette, like, backups that no one wanted. I just have to think of it as I wanted to do this and I needed to find somewhere to do it and this is what the opportunity that I was given so I just have to appreciate this opportunity no matter how bad I didn't want it I am glad I'm here and I really do enjoy this program no matter how much there is that Apache Bell Rangerette like rivalry we're all in it for the same thing. We all want that dance and drill team experience. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the world famous Kilmore College. sign and you are a an official member of the organization and you are a rangerette in my opinion it doesn't ever go away those experiences should stay with you the rest of your life i think rangerettes prepared me to be an adult more so than anything else The dancing part of it is temporary, but the lessons that they learned and the young women that they become is permanent. And I think that's the beauty of Rangerettes. Marching in that, onto that field, that first game, it was really an exciting time. We were 
not to be seen in our uniforms or anything before the halftime. Oh yeah, we walked out in the dark waiting for that light to pop on. It's a good thing we knew who was next to us. <laughs> yeah. Our first song was, uh, I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. I can't. Yes, you can. I don't know it. Just go I'll ahead. Be down to get down you in a taxi. To get you in a yes. taxi, honey. Don't be late. <laughs> better be ready and don't you be late. better be ready <laughs> and don't be String on your hat. On your hat. And you had to do it fast and, and then right. here <laughs> and then the hat. People were shocked, I think, to know that this had been developed and they didn't even know no what it was about. Oh, 